Hi, y'all. Welcome back to Religious Education Class. I hope that you had a great Thanksgiving holiday and that you didn't miss having a video from me too, too much. <clears throat> As you probably know, today is the second Sunday of the Catholic Church's liturgical season of Advent. As such, I would like to wish you a belated Happy New Year. How can that be? Well, you remember that in my last video, I showed you that the church's liturgical year, which is slightly different than the calendar year, begins on the first Sunday of Advent. Okay, so I showed you on the inside back cover of your Venture Handbook um, a depiction of the church's liturgical year. And I showed you how Advent is the beginning of the liturgical year. Um, Advent, the first um, Sunday of Advent and the start of the liturgical year was last Sunday, November 29th. So from a liturgical calendar rather than an annual calendar point of view, I am wishing you a belated, by one week, Happy New Year. Now in my video today, I'm going to provide you with a lot of information about Advent because it ties together a number of the lessons that we've um, that I've given you um, so far this year, and because I'm hoping that by learning more about Advent, it will help you to be ready to celebrate Christmas as Jesus meant for it to be celebrated, going well beyond the beautiful decorations, the yummy, yummy food, and the favorite gifts that you will receive. I will try to incorporate some of the lessons from last week's Venture um, Weekly, which you should have, and that's this one. Um, and today's weekly, as I go along. Now with that, let's begin, with to late, to begin today's lesson with an Advent prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My little Lord Jesus, I love you and thank you for this Advent season. Please help me to understand all that you have done for me. Your loving mother held you in her heart and brought you into this world. Help me to do the same. My loving Jesus, I choose you this Advent as my King and my God. Draw me close to you and help me to see my sins so that I can change the things that you want me to change. Mother Mary, pray for me this Advent so that I may do all that God wants me to do. You said yes to all that God asked of you. Please pray for me that I may do the same. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So kids, what is Advent? A little bit on its history and meaning for you. For many Christians unfamiliar with the liturgical year, there may be some confusion surrounding the meaning of the Advent season. Some people may know that the Advent season serves as an anticipation of Christ's birth in the weeks leading up to Christmas. This is part of the story, but there is more to Advent. The word Advent is derived from the Latin word Adventus, meaning coming. Scholars believe that during the 4th and 5th centuries, Advent was a season of preparation, not for remembering and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, but rather for the baptism of new Christians, which occurred at the January Feast of Epiphany. That is the celebration of God's incarnation represented by the visit of the Magi to the baby Jesus, <clears throat> his baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, and his first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana. Now, if you look at your weekly from last weekend, on page four, there is a definition that you need to pay attention to. It speaks of, at the bottom of the page, Advent celebrating the incarnation. 
and I'll read that to you. During Advent, we prepare to celebrate one of the great Christian mysteries. Incarnation is the word for the mystery of God's divine son becoming human. Christmas is the feast that celebrates the nativity, the birth of God's son in human flesh. Each year, the church gives us the Sundays of Advent as a time to prepare for Jesus' coming. We remember that Jesus came to bring salvation to all people and continues to be present in our lives today. Incarnation is a word with which you need to be familiar. And again, it speaks of the fact that Jesus is both God and man. Now, by the 6th century, remember we were talking earlier about the 4th and 5th centuries when um, people celebrated Advent um, by remembering um, God's revelation to the Magi, his baptism, and his first miracle. But by the 6th century, that all changed when Roman Christians began to tie Advent to the coming of Christ. And by the coming back then, they had in mind not Christ's first coming in the manger in Bethlehem, but his second coming at the end of time as the judge of the world. It was not until the Middle Ages that the Advent season first became explicitly linked to Christ's first coming at Christmas. So, for many, many centuries, the season of Advent was a time of fasting, almsgiving, and prayer, very similar to our season of Lent in, in anticipation of Easter. As Christians prepared for the return of Jesus to judge their worthiness to live with God forever in heaven. Today, the Advent season continues as a time to anticipate and prepare for the coming of Christ's kingdom but it also is a season to commemorate, that is, to remember and celebrate his first coming as a baby in a stable in Bethlehem at Christmas. Over the course of these four weeks of Advent, scripture readings at Mass um, move from passages about Christ's return in judgment to Old Testament passages about the expectation of the coming Messiah, to New Testament passages about the announcement of Christ's arrival by John the Baptist and the angels. In fact, today's Sunday Gospel, which is found in this week's venture, the one with the Christmas tree on the cover, speaks of the prophet Isaiah, who foretold the coming of John the Baptist and tells the story of how John the Baptist actually did go around preaching about the coming of the Lord and the need for people to be prepared for him by admitting their sins, asking forgiveness, and committing to fixing their relationship with God. I'd like you to read page four of today's venture so that you'll see what I mean about the gospel about Isaiah and John the Baptist. Okay. In summary, Advent is a season in the church's life intended to renew the experience of waiting and longing for the Messiah. Though Christ has already come into the world approximately 2,000 years ago, the church invites us to renew our desire for the Lord to be more deeply in our lives today and to also renew our desire for Christ's triumphant second coming into the world. Advent then is about the past, commemorating the birth of Christ 2,000 years ago in a stable in Bethlehem. The present, striving to become closer to God in our daily lives and the future, preparing for the eventual return of Jesus in the, uh, Jesus on Judgment Day. Advent preparations can be really practical, like decorating a tree or stringing up lights, 
but they are also intended to be spiritual. During Advent, we are invited to enter more frequently into silence, into prayer and reflection, where you think about your relationship with God, <clears throat> into scripture, that is the readings of the Bible, and into the sacramental life of the church, such as by going to Mass, receiving Holy Eucharist, and receiving the Sacrament of Penance, all to prepare for celebrating Christmas. A little bit about Advent customs. There are a number of customs associated with the Advent season with which you may be familiar. You probably are familiar with an Advent calendar where you open a door each day between December 1st and Christmas Day to discover a scripture reading or maybe a piece of candy or a little prize. There is a wonderful Advent calendar on page seven of last week's weekly, this one. And it's on page seven. Let's see it here. Okay. Where each day includes an activity that you can do as Advent preparation. This would be a good thing for you to do, even if you missed a week. You can start now. You may have made a Jesse tree in your religious education classes in the past. That's another Advent custom. And even our Christmas trees are a part of the Advent as they are sometimes put up on the first Sunday of the season in anticipation of Christmas. But I would like to tell you a little bit about the meaning of the Advent wreath and candles, which we would have had in our classrooms had we been conducting classes as usual this year, and which some of you may use at home during the season. The Advent wreath first appeared in Germany in 1839. A Lutheran minister working at a mission for children created a wreath out of the wheel of a cart. He placed 20 small red candles and four large white candles inside the ring. The red candles were lit on weekdays and the four white candles were lit on Sundays. Eventually, the Advent wreath was created out of evergreen, symbolizing everlasting life in the midst of winter and death. The circle reminds us of God's unending lo love and the eternal life that he makes possible for us. Advent candles are often nestled in, in the evergreen wreath. And additional decorations like holly and berries are sometimes added. Their red color symbolizes Jesus' sacrifice and death for us. Pine cones can symbolize the new life that Jesus brings through his resurrection. The most common Advent candle tradition today involves four candles. A new candle is lit on each of the four Sundays before Christmas. Each candle represents something different, although traditions vary. The four candles traditionally represent hope, faith, joy, and peace. Often the first, second, and fourth candles are purple. The third candle is rose-colored, representing the joy that we feel in anticipation of Christmas, which will occur in a week. Sometimes all the candles are red. In other traditions, all four candles are blue or white. And occasionally, a fifth white candle is placed in the middle and is lit on Christmas Day to celebrate Jesus' birth. So, that concludes my faith history lesson for today. Why did I bother you with all of that? Well, because I'm hoping that by learning about how the season of Advent has developed and expanded over time, that you'll think about how you can develop and expand your own participation in these remaining weeks of the season in order to grow closer to Jesus in the present and to be better prepared to both celebrate his birthday on December 25th and to meet him when he returns the second time. I'd like you to ask you to review your entire weekly. Oh, not that one. This one for today, which directs you to various Bible readings on the cover. 
Maybe you can get your parents to help you find those Bible passages and, and to read them. It also tells a story about forgiveness and reconciliation on pages two and three. It includes the gospel reading about St. John the Baptist, which I mentioned to you earlier. And importantly, it defines and explains sin and how sin separates us from God. This is an important part of today's weekly. And you should really read it carefully, please. It concludes with some very interesting scenarios which you may have already encountered in your lives <clears throat> or certainly could encounter and which challenge you to think about solutions to the dilemmas they present in ways that would be pleasing to God or displeasing depending upon the solution that might happen. And finally, the last page is a graphic story of St. Juan Diego and Our Lady of Guadalupe. His is an amazing story, well worth your time exploring on the internet if your parents are okay with you doing so. If, you, um, if you're familiar with Wikipedia, it has, a, it has a lengthy explanation of what happened with the saint and with Our Lady at that time. Now one final word before we say our closing prayer. As you probably know, the fifth grade religious education class at St. Joseph on the Brandywine has traditionally put on a Christmas pageant for the parish. I am so sorry that because of COVID, of course, we cannot do that this year. So what we're thinking about is asking you if you would be willing to have yourselves filmed by your parents, narrating a part of the Christmas pageant story we would collect your narrations and compile them into a single video of the story from start to finish and upload them onto the parish website for all to see. Your participation would be optional, not mandatory, and you would have a choice as to whether you would want to wear a costume, um, depending upon what story, what part of the story you would be narrating. Our religious education coordinator, Mrs. Curtin, will be writing to your parents about this, but I wanted you to be thinking about it in the meantime. So that's it for today. Maybe we can conclude our lesson with a Hail Mary as we think about the day when she was visited by the angel Gabriel who told her that she was to become the mother of God. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your attention today, and I look forward to talking with you again next week.